Australian states and territories didn't always have different laws and leaders. There was a time when Australian states were essentially different countries, or separate British colonies, where you could be stopped at the border by immigration officials and searched. They had different leaders, laws and defence. Henry Parks, known as the Father of Federation and five-time Premier of New South Wales, was pushing to unite the colonies into one country with the same government in the late 1800s. In 1889, he made a famous oration or speech in Tenterfield as a push to convince leaders of colonies to get together and talk about federation. In 1891, the delegates drew up a draft constitution for the Federation of Australia. However, it remained a draft as the colonies could not agree on the terms of the constitution. After pressure from citizens and lobbyists, a vote was held in which all colonies except Western Australia voted yes to federation. One year later, Western Australia decided to join and in 1901, in Sydney Centennial Park, the Commonwealth of Australia was declared by Lord Hopeton, the first Governor-General. By this time, the Australian people had embraced the idea and turned out in their thousands for celebrations all over the new nation. This included the opening of Federation arches in each state, such as the Commonwealth Arch in Park Street, Sydney. The first Prime Minister was Edmund Barton, who had helped write the new constitution. However, not everyone benefited from this new constitution. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people weren't included in the constitution at all, and it made it more difficult for non-Europeans to emigrate into Australia. In fact, Edmund Barton's government put in place the Immigration Restriction Act of 1901, which made the White Australia Policy Law. However, federation is still a defining moment in Australia's history, 